The next item is Private Members Bill, North-South Interconnector Bill 2016, first stage, and I call on uh, Deputy Father Tobin yes, uh, to move for leave to introduce the bill. I move for leave, sir. Good morning, Mr. and um, I'm to speak on this bill, the North-South Interconnected Bill, on behalf of uh, my two colleagues as well, Quivino Quilon and uh, Michal Kulrivi. And the, the purpose of this bill is to ensure that the North-South Interconnector does happen. It's a necessary piece of legislation, a necessary piece of infrastructure. It's been held up at the moment by a very, I suppose, uh, pig-headed attitude by the government that it needs to be overheaded and um, it's not likely to be ever built if they continue down this route. It should be undergrounded and just to give you a bit of context, for about 10 years, a decade, we have the decent ordinary people of County Meath campaigning day and night, uh, week in, week out, in an effort to make sure that their families are kept safe, that their businesses uh, are, are thriving and that their property uh, does not collapse in value. And Airgrid have a plan to build uh, hundreds of 45 metre high uh, pylons throughout the county, up through uh, Cavanagh Monan, and into, uh, it, it will also look to be built in County Tyrone on the northern side. Now, this has created great fear and anguish amongst the people of Mead. People are worried about, you know, health, uh, for example. There is an understanding, uh, there's a, a strong body of opinion there, not least amongst the European Commission uh, on, uh, Scientific Committee, that the previous conclusion that ELF magnetic fields are a possible carcinogen, chiefly based on childhood leukaemia results, is still valid. That's a very strong statement, and it's a statement that puts the wind up most families that are being threatened with this piece of infrastructure. And what this bill does is to address that fear and ask the government to carry out an independent investigation to make sure that that knowledge is brought to uh, the people's attention, that proper research and the knowledge is in the people's hands before a decision is made. There's also a problem with these, uh, that people will be trapped in the curtilage of these pylons because obviously immediately the house prices are going to collapse and they won't be able to, to move out of the area. Not that many, many of them don't want to move out of the area, but if they so choose, they won't be able to do so because there's no value in their homes as well. Again, where that fear exists, this piece of legislation allows for uh, independent research to be carried out and that research to be provided to the people, the host community who live along the length of the north-south interconnector. Also, this, there's fears in the, the local areas with regards to business, people who are in the tourism business, the heritage business, agriculture and um, in the blood stock uh, business, that these pylons are going to have an enormous threat on their particular livelihoods. This piece of legislation, again, simply tasks the government to produce independent research to identify what is exactly the threat to the business community, to the agricultural community, the bloodstock community, etc., and put that information into the hands of the citizen. Now, we were told, obviously, that you know, this is an impossibility to underground it, that it's going to be so expensive. Uh, first of all, we were told that it, it just couldn't happen, that it wasn't feasible. Uh, and then we saw the rush to Batterstown and the east-west uh, interconnector put uh, pay to this particular uh, mistruth. In 2007, Airgrid stated it would be 25 times uh, the cost uh, of under, uh, undergrounding it. Um, again, in 2009, they said it would be seven times the cost if we were to underground it. Pat Rabbit, the minister, previous minister, stated it would be three and a half times to underground it. So we see within the nine years of this particular plan, that the cost, even by the proponents of overgrounding it, the cost of undergrounding it is actually collapsing at the moment. And we have spoken to experts who firmly believe that the cost is far less, maybe about one and a half times. Indeed, I put a PQ to the Minister to ask the Minister what would the cost be to the, to the uh, customers of electricity in, in the state if this was undergrounded, and the Minister uh, said he, he, he couldn't say. So, where are we at? We want to make sure we put democracy back into the planning process. We know that the Fianna Fáil Green government created the Strategic Infrastructure uh, Planning Act. And what that did, did in effect was to take democratic influence out of the planning process. In other words, the normal planning process in the County Council would no longer apply. Now, what that does, it forces uh, potentially dangerous pieces of infrastructure onto communities. That should not be done in a democracy. And this bill seeks to put democracy back into it. So if uh, a number of people 
along the host community, along the, the North Side Interconnector, feel that this is a threat to their livelihoods or their lives, well, they have a, an opportunity to organise a meeting which will be chaired for by on board Planola. And at that meeting, if more, uh, and after collecting all the independent evidence and after deliberating over that independent evidence, if the people feel that uh, they are against the overgrounding of these 400 kV uh, uh, lines in their area, well then they have a right to vote on it. And if over 50% of those people vote against the overheading of them, then on the chairperson from on board Planola sends a letter to the Minister uh, for Environment and then the Minister for Environment is obliged to proceed with undergrounding. Thank it's you. plain and simple and I would really appeal, um, there's been a lot of political debate and uh, I know there's a Fine Gael, uh, Mead TD here today, there's been a lot of debate over this in the last nine or ten years Thank and the, the campaign feel betrayed and aggrieved with regards to the actions of this government in implementing their wishes. And I would appeal to those TDs to stand up for the, the, the citizens that they represent and actually make sure that this piece of legislation is implemented before the door closes. Mr. 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 Mr